Ladies and gentlemen, this is Paul Evangel speaking to you from the terminal of life near the gate of death, where along with many others we will shortly be boarding the Interworld Airlines flight FINAL for the New Jerusalem. This is the very first time that anyone in broadcasting has been given the authority to actually witness and describe the flight of a departed soul and relay the information so that you can hear, experience, and prepare yourself for this heavenly journey. The terminal is very crowded today, and we are told that this is not at all unusual, for eventually all people of all nations will pass through this point of separation. Attention, Let's listen to the dispatcher. Interworld Airlines Flight F-I-N-A-L non-stop supersonic service to the New Jerusalem is now ready for boarding at the gate of death. Passengers holding confirmed reservations for this flight may proceed immediately to this gate through the blood-sprinkled concourse. Because the exact time of departure is uncertain, you are urged to remain ready at any moment. Thank you. The crowd seems to be milling about, most everyone talking, some praying, some laughing, with only a few people acting as if they were paying any attention to the announcement. They're making ready to leave on this flight. Who are these that were listening to the dispatcher and responding? Well, with close observation, we notice that each one of them has a ticket in his hand. Sir, could I see your ticket for just a moment so that I can tell our audience about it? Thank you. It says, issued from Mount Calvary by the chief agent, the Holy Spirit, and it has been officially stamped with the blood of Jesus Christ. Here you are, sir. Thanks again. God bless you. I notice, too, that each of the ticket holders is carrying his own baggage. I'm told each one is furnished with the baggage of grace and godliness. No sad faces seem to be here to enter the gate of death. Everybody is beaming. One of the passengers seems to be singing. Let's walk along with the portable microphone and see if we can pick up just a little of his song of praise. And when I pass this veil of sorrow, I'll dwell upon the other side. Someday beyond the reach of mortal kin, Someday God only knows just where and when The wheels of mortal life shall all stand still And I shall go to dwell on Zion's hill. Our singing passenger pauses for just a moment, perhaps thinking about the gates of pearl that will soon be swinging open wide for him. He the pearly gates will open so that I may enter in for he purchased my redemption and forgave me all my sins. Ladies and gentlemen, darkness seems to be falling about us as the passengers approach the gate of death. But everyone keeps moving along at a steady pace as if there were a guiding light, for they are proceeding without fear of any kind. Friends and loved ones standing about in the terminal of life gather around the gate now, extending their hands and bidding farewell. For those left behind, the parting is a sorrowful one. After all, for some, this is the last time they will ever see their loved ones. But for others, those already making preparations, this is only temporary, and their departure time is not too far away. And now, if you listen, you can hear a comforting song of farewell from the passengers. Inside the eastern gate Bid me ready 
Looking forward to a reunion in heaven, now respond with a verse of commitment. After bidding farewell to loved ones and friends, the passengers show their tickets to the angel who waits at the gate of death. The air is getting a bit chilly on the ramp as the gate opens, but the warmth of peace and hope in the hearts of the passengers seems to produce great calmness as they enter the plane. Let's take just a moment and attempt to describe this unusual aircraft. It's a large, glowing, and resplendent airliner, and I must say unlike anything we have ever seen before. Its beauty and splendor actually defy description. It's surrounded by a brightly shining heavenly light. Red letters symbolizing the blood of Christ read Enter World Airlines. I am entering the plane now along with the passengers and we are greeted by our stewardess. She seems to be checking something. Just a moment. The crowd is all around her. Oh yes, she is rechecking their tickets. I'm trying to figure out what she's going to do with the small two-edged sword she's carrying. She reaches out, and she has cut all earthly burdens from their backs. We should have known. After all, where these are going, earthly burdens can never come. As the passengers are comfortably seated, they can hear the plane motors as they are each one fired in order. The first two are already running. Now three. And now four. They are taxiing out to the runway for takeoff. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, these preparations have all taken place in but a twinkling of an eye. Welcome aboard Interworld Airlines, flight F-I-N-A-L, non-stop supersonic service to the New Jerusalem. Your captain is the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm your chief stewardess, the Angel of Mercy. You will find your seatbelt in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Fasten your seatbelts, please. As the plane leaves the earth, many of the passengers turn their heads to look out the window. For here on earth they leave many things that they will never see again. There's the hospital, the funeral coach, the cemetery. To all of these they bid farewell.
attention, please. I am thy captain. The flight thou art making today is the same which Abraham, Moses, John, Peter, Paul, and all of us redeemed before thee have made. Enoch and Elijah joined us in mid-flight without passing through the gate of death. We should be flying today at altitudes unlimited and at a speed never known to thee before. Flying time to the New Jerusalem is not considered, for thou art now in the realm known as eternity, where time is no more. As we left the earth, the weather was stormy with heavy overcast. But the report from the New Jerusalem is, as it always will be, a beautiful day without a cloud. The plane is continuing upward now, piercing through the stratosphere at a speed which must be unknown to man. As we peer through the window, we can see that it has just passed many of the distant stars. At least they were distant as far as Earth is concerned. We are now far beyond the moon, Mars, Jupiter, and the Milky Way. Directly in front of us now, there's a dazzling light. It must be brighter than the sun and it certainly is stirring up some excitement here in the cabin of the plane. The passengers recognize it as their destination as we get closer. is a wonderful moment in this plane. The sights are just fantastic. The plane is now coming in over the New Jerusalem and the passengers can see clearly the outlay of this beautiful city. Thy captain again. As we fly over the holy city, let me point out some things of interest thou hast read in the Holy Bible. First, the great and high wall that thou seest completely surrounds the four-square city. The wall is of jasper with twelve choice stones in its foundation. Just ahead are three beautiful gates. There are three of these gates on each side of the city. The twelve gates are twelve pearls, each gate a pearl. They are not shut at all by day, for there is no night here. Just below us now is the river of life, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the golden streets of the city and on either side of the river is the tree of life, bearing twelve manner of fruits. The leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. I am sure thou hast already noticed that the entire city is full of light, like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Though it is full day, there is no sun. This city hath no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God doth lighten it. The Lamb of God is the light hereof. The approach is clear for an immediate landing at New Jerusalem's victory field. The plane is landing now, approaching the runway. And a smooth landing it is. The aircraft is on the ground and is taxiing over Victory Field's golden runway toward its position at the Port of Glory. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the stewardess is speaking. Welcome to the New Jerusalem. It has been a pleasure to have you today on Interworld Airlines Flight FINAL. We will not invite you to fly with us again, for this is your final trip. You are now entering your eternal home. We have not served a meal in flight today because you have all been reserved a place at the great feast that will soon be spread at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Christ himself will serve you and there will be plenty for everyone, for there is an endless supply. Help yourself. It all belongs to you. The captain requests that you keep your seatbelts fastened until the aircraft has taxied into position.